New at 11, Florida is one of the few places in the country where Highlight is hanging on. You can still watch and bet on the sport at a few casinos. The heyday of Highlight was decades ago, but there are signs of a resurgence now. CBS 4's Mike Cuno shows us what it's going to take for Highlight to hit a new high. <laughs> Some call it the fastest sport on earth. With woven cestas swinging through the air, pelotas reaching speeds of up to 170 miles per hour, and players jumping off walls, the High Life Fronton was the place to be and the place to be seen in the 70s and 80s. It was even featured on the popular show Miami Vice. Back in the day, people smoked inside, and it was a cloud of smoke and the cracking sound of the ball and the roar of the people. It was great. So that would be in 1986. Joey Cornblit is a highlight legend, just one of two players ever to have their jersey number retired. There's Joey right there. Oh, wow, look at that. <laughs> eh, look at that. How neat. Brings back a lot of great memories, man. In its heyday, he played in front of crowds of 10,000 people, where the intensity spilled over into the stands and even the locker room. There's only one winner. Yeah. And there's uh, seven losers. All in the same locker room. All in the same locker room, and <laughs> helmets are flying. People were yelling, screaming at you, oh, underserve, overserve, you know, drop it. And it, you couldn't even really hear your partner. That fierceness hasn't died down inside the fronton, but the crowd is a different story. At the casino at Dania Beach, the viewing section holds just about 500 people, a stark contrast from the height of the sport's popularity. We used to come all the time. Um, then it kind of lost its popularity, and uh, I guess I got busy. There's a lot of competition now for the entertainment dollar. Benny Bueno, the highlight operations manager for the casino at Dania Beach, grew up in the sport and is trying to keep it from quickly disappearing. There are a number of factors that affected its popularity, from a lengthy player strike in the 80s to a growing number of sports franchises and even more gambling in the casinos themselves. What really gears uh, the success of High Life is that there's a lot of people betting it. The pools are bigger. It's just like in horse racing. If we have a couple hundred people betting a couple hundred dollars, the pools are significant, but they're not going to get people that are winning $30,000 at, uh, at, at a poker tournament. Professional players have contracts tied to the success of the casinos, plus incentives for winning. How's the living? for a highlight player? Uh, it's a dream, man. It's, it? it's, it's, it's a dream. I mean, uh, you, you, know, you got a lot of time off. You know, it's not like we make, you know, crazy money, but we make decent enough to, you know, make a living. We knew going in, they're not going to be great the first day. Documentaries like Billy Corbin's Magic City Hustle have highlighted new interest for the sport with six-figure earnings. But as casinos in the area move on from Greyhound Racing and adopt high life, they'll face another problem. No doubt gambling is a major part of high life. But Tevin here, he's 48. Now, for the sport to keep growing, it's going to need some new blood. It's going to hit the wall, and then you got to throw it like that. Pros like Tevin and Arietta move from Connecticut, where their frontons closed down for good. With little support for youth highlight and less than a dozen operating frontons across the country, the pool of players is getting smaller, and bringing international players over is difficult with stricter immigration policies. It would take a huge investment for several people to say, we're going to take highlight and we're going to make it a mainstream sport, we're going to get sponsorships, we're going to get people to follow it, we're going to have amateur places for kids to come and learn how to play the sport, and it's really a grassroots effort. You have to start at the very beginning. Mike Cunho, CBS 4 News tonight. Another factor potentially fueling High Life's popularity, local talent taking up the sport. Athletes like Tenard Davis, Chad Barnes, and Kenny Kelly, all former UM Hurricanes, are making the transition to professional High Life, and they're enjoying every heart-stopping moment of it. And you love the heart-stopping I remember moments. it from back in the day. It was so much fun. I'm glad that it's making a comeback. Yeah, yeah. 